Hi guys, welcome to this recording, which is going to be your concluding recording for topic seven. So this should be the very last one. And I'm hoping that you're getting to love linear programming genuinely as much as I do. I love linear programming because you've got lovely steps to follow. And even from an objective test perspective, because you know you've got DOFPI sitting there, you know that you can place yourself at any point in that process and be able to pick out the uh, requirements that you're being asked. So what we're looking at here then is a continuation of shadow pricing. So at this point, you should have already reviewed your introduction to linear programming and then um, the information on apply your knowledge to and apply your knowledge three, which saw you through DOFPIs. And then you should have had a look at your Slack and shadow pricing recording prior to this one because we're just going to pick up now and have a look at Apply Your Knowledge 4. Now Apply Your Knowledge 4 is asking you to calculate the shadow price for wood and for labour and it relates back to the information we calculated in Apply Your Knowledge 3. So you will need to have the information available from Apply Your Knowledge 3, guys. In addition to that, if you'd like to have a go at calculating the shadow price for wood and labour, please feel free to pause the recording um, and have a really good attempt at it and then come back in. We'll be debriefing wood first and then we'll be looking at labour. So again, you might decide to stop the recording halfway through so that you can have a go on your own before you see it done uh, with me. Okay then, so the company, it says DEF Limited, may be able to obtain additional resources in order to increase production, but they're not sure how much they should pay for it without affecting contribution levels. Therefore, we need to calculate shadow prices. Now obviously both of these um, resources were binding constraints because actually they were both on the intersect, weren't they? We only had two binding constraints in this question. And both of them were therefore formulating part of the optimal solution. Okay, so we had wood and we had labour. Now remember, when we're looking at shadow pricing, what we're going to do is we're going to take our simultaneous equation and literally bring that down. Okay, so I'm going to steal that from here. Okay and bring that down. Now when we're doing simultaneous equations, what you must do is you must ensure that you are creating a separate shadow price for each of your constraints. So we've got apply your knowledge for, and we are going to be doing shadow prices. Okay, so first of all, then we are going to be doing a shadow price for wood. So I'm going to put in my simultaneous equation. Now then, my simultaneous equation looked like this, didn't it? We had our original formulating constraints. We then multiplied it up to give us a zero point at x. Now, in order to add a shadow price or to calculate a shadow price, we need to add 1 to our original constraint, therefore making 1,200, 1,201. Remember then, when you multiply up your lines, if you need to do that to force a 0, you need to multiply all of the line up. We didn't actually need to multiply our wood line, so we can just add 1 again. And this time then, we, our resulting figure here is 361. Okay, now you just need to work it back through to see what your revised contribution is. So what we said then, we've already got x is 0. Therefore, we know that 2y is 361. Therefore, y must now equal $180.50. Oh, sorry, not dollars, units we're looking at. So now you need to substitute that into your original formula. The original formula was 3x plus 
4y, which we now know is 180.50. And that meant we end up with 1201. Remember, we work into our new level of constraint because we've added 1. Therefore, we now know that 3x must equal 479 because that's the remaining value between 1201 and 722, which is the value of the total y's that we've got. Therefore, your x value is now 159.67. So we've got our two new values. We simply bring down our objective function, which was 10x plus 12y, and we now multiply by our new values, 159.67 for x and 180.50 for y. And when we add those across, we will get a revised contribution. And your revised contribution is 3,762.70. Your original contribution that you calculated when we had to look at the question and completed our simultaneous equation was 3,760. Therefore, the remaining value here is $2.70. $2.70 then is the shadow price for wood. So this is the amount you would pay for an additional, um, what are we working in? Wood, it was metres, wasn't it? For an additional metre of wood. Now in terms of labour, you need to recalculate that for labour. So I'm just going to put another page in. So carrying this down then. And again, this is an ideal opportunity for you to pause the recording and have a really good go at this. And if you haven't had a go on your own, I strongly suggest you do that now. Okay, let's have a look then for our labour. Bringing down our simultaneous equation again, now what we need to do is add 1 to our original constraint. Or, because we multiplied our line up by 4, to give us a zero value of x, I can just add 4 to my constraint at this level. Okay, whichever way you do it's fine. The fact is you start off by adding 1 to your original constraint and if you're multiplying the line up to force yourself a 0x or y value, then you need to make sure that you are also multiplying up your constraint at the end as well. Okay, so the value then that we're going to be left with here, guys, is 356. So we now know that 2y is 356, therefore 1y is going to be equivalent to 178. You can now substitute that into your original calculation. So again, you can go back to having 3x and 2y being 844, or you can strip it right back. Either way is fine because you've multiplied up, so it's not a problem. So you could strip it back to your original labour um, constraint formulation. That's absolutely fine, as long as you're consistent. Uh, so we've now got a y value here then, which was 2 of y at 178. And that will give us a value of 844. So as long as you're consistent and you put every element of the formula in, you can use either your original or where you've multiplied up. It's absolutely fine. That will give you then a value for 3x of totaling 488. Therefore, x must equal 162.67. These are your new values. So you take your objective function down, 10x plus 12y, and multiply by your new values, 
which was 16267 for x and 178 for y. Therefore, you've got a revised contribution of 376270. Your original contribution was 3760. Again, take one from the other, and that will give you your shadow price for labour. And again, this is the amount that you are prepared to pay additional for your um, labour. So if you go back up to the original question, it told you that you were paying 840 per hour labour and 16 for wood. So what would we actually end up paying? We'd pay 16 for the wood, 840 for the labour, then you need to add your shadow prices on, 270 and 270. That is pure coincidence, by the way, guys, that it's the same. So it's 1870 is your total wood price that you would pay, and 1110 is your total labour price that you would be prepared to pay for one extra unit of resource. Remember, you need to make sure that you can calculate whether or not you've got any slack. Although not asked for in this question, let's just demonstrate how you do that for good practice. The optimal solution was originally x was 160 and y was 180. And obviously, when you're calculating your slack, that's the information you need. Now then, your constraint for wood was 3x plus 4y must not be greater than your 1,200 metres that you had available. So all you do is multiply up by the number of units that you've identified and what you'll find is that that equals your 1200. Therefore, you've got none left. So it is all used. Therefore, there is no slack in the system. And that's why you have to work out a shadow price for wood. And then for labour, our construction. Our formulation for constraint was three quarters of an hour for X, half an hour for Y, and we had 210 hours in total. So again, multiplying that through, just do that. So multiplying that through again at your new units of 160 and 180, shows that you have used up all of your 210 hours. So again, we have used all of our resource, therefore we have no slack available. So you would not pay any more for any of your additional resource, you would still only expect to pay the standard price if you had slack available. Okay? That concludes this recording and concludes linear programming. Well done, guys.